Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna to be sharing with you our favorite method to cleaning up your noisy video footage. So here's the deal, noisy video footage sucks, and if you don't know what noise is, this is a really good example. This is probably really extreme, but we wanted to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what we're talking about when we say that we're getting rid of noise. Now, nobody likes noise, and unless you're going for some sort of stylistic approach, it's genuinely understood to be a mistake, usually from bumping your ISO up way too much to account for a poor lighting condition. So today, we're gonna to be showing you our favorite method to getting rid of this video noise in Premiere Pro, but a quick disclaimer, we're actually not gonna be showing you how to do it right inside of Premiere Pro, we're actually gonna be dynamically linking it into Adobe After Effects and fixing it there. Now, we would just love there to be a baked in way in Premiere Pro to get rid of video noise, but at the moment, the only real way to do that is with the median legacy effect, which basically just averages out a bunch of pixels and makes your footage look blurry and kind of gross looking. It's way more of a band-aid than an actual proper fix, and nobody really seems to like the look that you get. Conversely, we're also not gonna be looking at third-party solutions because we don't want you guys spending any extra money if you don't have to, especially if you have access to something great and powerful inside of Adobe After Effects already. But in case you were looking at third-party solutions, we would actually suggest that you look at Neat Video, which Adobe themselves has actually sort of endorsed as a good third-party option. But with all that out of the way, let's dive into Premiere Pro and then After Effects to show you how you can clean up your noisy video footage. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and let's start out by going to our footage that we want to clean up and right-click it, and go to Replace with After Effects Composition. This will bring up After Effects automatically so you can start working with your footage there. Now let's start by taking a look at the footage that we've got here. You might notice right off the bat that the footage we have here is way less noisy than the footage we showed in the first example. To be truthful, the footage we showed at the very beginning was way too noisy for any program to be able to deal with without leaving your footage an absolute mess. But there is still a lot of noise present here in this shot, as you can see, for example, here on my shirt. Usually noise will tend to show up even more evidently in darker areas, like in my dark shirt here, or if we move up to this dark corner up here in the top right. To actually start to get rid of this noise, all we have to do is add one effect to work with. Go to Effects, and search for Remove Grain. Even though it says Grain, it's actually for video noise as well. Now that it's applied over our clip, we should be able to start working with it by going up to Effect Controls here, and we can see that we have a ton of parameters that we can use to influence the noise of this clip. There's a lot of different ways that you can adjust your footage, but there's two main sections to take a look at. The first is the preview region, which will influence the area the effect is applied to so that you can see a clear contrast before and after, but also so that you can play around with parameters so that your computer doesn't have to work quite as hard to load the effect for the entire range of your footage. Just a small sample section until you like what you've got. By default, it should be set to preview, but in case it's not, changing it is possible up here in the viewing mode. Now, once you have your preview window visible, you can click and drag it to move it around your frame. Doing this will show you a really clear before and after comparison of different areas of your footage, as a basic pass of the noise removal has already taken place as soon as you lay down the remove grain effect. You can already see a little bit of the effect taking place. Up here in the preview region, you can also adjust how wide or how tall the preview window is, as well as whether or not the square around it is visible and what color it actually is. All changes to our noise reduction will show up only in this preview window for the moment. But now we actually want to start making some changes to the amount of noise in our footage. To actually start making those changes, now go to the Noise Reduction settings. By increasing the noise reduction, your cleanup will be more intense in terms of how hard After Effects is scrubbing down your footage. But before you think you can crank it up just to a metaphorical 11, you need to know that it'll take longer for your computer to process, and it's also going to push your system really hard. And pushing it too hard may also give your footage an unnatural look to it. The same goes for the number of passes. Think of it like noise reduction is how hard the effect attacks your footage, and the passes is how many attempts it gives and how many tries it makes. Increasing both of these will increase the amount of time and power required for your computer to process the effect. Also, keep in mind that increasing the reduction amount will also potentially create a loss of detail in your image. You can really see a good example here when we bring the preview window up to my beard. It looks like there's a blurry wash over top of it. And even though the noise has been essentially removed, the end result looks kind of gross. So really, to see how the effect looks as a whole, you can set your viewing mode from preview to final output. And as we saw a little bit, it really looks gross, and our footage has lost most of its detail and has a gross wash over top of it. 
You can really see it when we toggle the effect on and off. Going down to the shirt again, we can see a big difference between the before and after of the noise itself. And because there's not a lot of detail in this area, the effect looks better as a whole. Kind of. So with this in mind, a good suggestion we'd like to make is, with this effect, less is more. Be subtle with this effect and don't try to crank up all the dials all the way up. So let's dial down some of the settings here a bit again, and to make the process easier, let's turn our viewing mode back to preview. Now, to help us find a better medium zone, let's take our preview window and try to find an area where we can see a bit of noise, but also a bit of texture. So this area looks good for comparison. So let's take down the noise reduction, as well as the number of passes, so that we're still attacking the noise, but it's not obliterating our footage. And for me, with my footage, a noise reduction of about 1.5 and a number of passes of 3 is about the right zone for me to be in. We're still retaining some of the texture here, but we're also attacking the noise. And to make sure that you can see a clear image of before and after, I'll quickly throw up a screenshot here. Great! For some of you, this might actually be good enough, but we want to make sure that you have all of the information you need to use this effect to its maximum potential. First of all, here in the mode section, the setting is set to multi-channel to start with by default. You can leave this as it is, but just so that you're aware, there is a mode called single channel, which is specifically designed to help you work with grayscale or black and white footage. Next up, we have some fine tuning options. If you can't quite get the noise removal that you're looking for, but it's also starting to make your image look unnatural. There's four different options to adjust in this section. Chroma suppression, texture, noise bias, and clean solid areas. Chroma suppression takes down some of the coloration from the noise to clean up the image. If the noise is colorful, like traditional digital video noise is, increasing this control can help remove it. But setting this amount too high might strip some of the color from the rest of the image itself. Texture helps you to control between the noise of your image and fine detail textures. For example, it might be hard for a really basic algorithm to distinguish between video noise and wood grain. Decreasing the amount will mean that the image is more aggressively smoothed overall which might take away from elements of natural texture in the video, while a higher value will make the adjustment more fine, and try to distinguish a little bit harder between these areas, the highest of which is all the way up, which will leave your image completely unchanged. Noise size bias is pretty self-explanatory when you think about it. A negative value will mean that you're telling the effect to remove smaller size noise elements, while trying to leave larger ones unchanged, while a positive number is the reverse, asking it to get rid of larger noise or grain, while leaving smaller particles unchanged. Finally, clean solid areas specifically let you target areas in which there's little difference between adjacent pixels, like on a large solid color object or background. Careful when increasing this amount too much though, as it'll have the potential to give the resulting area an unnatural degree of smoothness and blending. Next up is what's called temporal filtering, which you can either enable or disable with a simple checkbox. This doesn't look simply at the individual frame, but at the difference between frames to help the effect to take place more effectively across time. But this can leave you with some strange banding during large movements within the frame. So be sure to adjust both the percentage amount as well as the motion sensitivity to make sure that you're getting something that's not too intense but still helps to account for how your footage looks when it's played back in real time. Now, this is where you might be left with an image that's much more free of noise, but might be a little too soft and smooth compared to the original footage. Here you can see when I toggle on and off the effect, there's a noticeable difference in the sharpness, especially around my face. Here's a great time to use the Unsharp Mask feature, found within the effect settings. Using the Unsharp Mask can help to bring back some of the detail and sharpness that might have been lost after the noise removal. And it does this in a more intelligent way than just an overall basic sharpening effect of the image. There's actually a detailed Unsharp Mask effect in both Premiere Pro and After Effects, and if you wanted to look into that in more specific detail, feel free to check out this video that we've already created on how to best use it. Because we've already gone through this tool in detail, we're just gonna blaze through it quickly in this video. Basically, increasing the amount will increase the intensity of the sharpening effect as a whole. 
Increasing the radius will impact how wide away from other areas of contrast the sharpening spreads and bleeds out. So good to keep an eye that this doesn't get too high. And then threshold will help to suppress any sharpening that's happening in areas of low contrast so that the sharpness is left only in areas of high contrast. There's two sections left here, and the next one is sampling. It's actually not attacking your noise in a specific way, but just telling After Effects to look at your footage from a different perspective. Right now your image is just being scanned and adjusted, but if we go to the sample mode here, we can see that we have multiple boxes that appear, and these are acting as sample regions for our remove grain effect to view from and attack grain from this context. The first option is source frame, which you'll have to manually set which frame of video you want to use for your sampling to take place. By default, it's set to automatic to get a random interpretation of your footage, but you can set this to manual and then move these sample markers here to areas of high noise in your footage to give a more specific attack pattern for your remove grain effect to create based on the sections that you've specifically selected. You can also change the number of sample squares. The less, the more quickly your computer will be able to run through this process, but potentially the less accurate it will be by comparison. Then you can increase or decrease the size of all of these areas simultaneously. And lastly, the Blend with Original section simply allows you to keep all of the specific parameters that you set up, but if you find that your result is just a bit too intense, you can reduce the intensity of the entire effect as a whole for all of the parameters as a unit. So pulling it back just a touch will help to keep your effect, but blend a little bit of the original shot back in. By blending it just slightly, this might reintroduce a tiny bit of noise back into your shot, but might also help you to get back a bit of image clarity and realism that were lost during the process. Once you're all done, make sure to set your view back to final output, and then it'll take your computer probably a while to process. But here you can just save your work, and then exit, because all of our work will be transferred over to Premiere Pro through dynamic linking. It'll likely be really slow and laggy, so you'll want to render out your clip to be able to see it play back in real time. And one last piece of advice is that if you're still left with some undesirable noise, you can actually crush the shadows of your image to darken the darker areas of your footage. As long as it's stylistically in line with what you want, it'll actually help to reduce the amount of visible noise in your shot by comparison. I've got a preset LUT that I use for my footage here, but if you're just going off the cuff with this, the RGB curves are a great tool to use to reduce the shadows of your image to help suppress that noise even more. It's also important just to say as we wrap up, to remember that noise removal is a last ditch effort and should never be used as a substitute for say, properly lighting your subjects to begin with. Make sure your image is as amazing as you possibly can get it in camera. And if you can't go back and reshoot, this is an option to have in your back pocket. But guys, that's it for me. If you wanted to see how to add film grain creatively to enhance your videos, we've actually got a tutorial on that. We've also got some awesome film grain overlays that you can check out right here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.